Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm going to react to switch out uh, what the 2019 NBA draft proved three years later. So from the thumbnail alone, seems like he's talking about you know Zion and shit. But uh, let's see, let's see what he's talking about, bro. Let's get into the reaction. Because you have these talent evaluators who think, oh man, the 20 man, this guy has potential. He can jump out the gym. Uh, look at his body. He can move this way. Uh, he looks like he's going to be this. But all potential means you haven't proven shit. And Facts. that's what we drive nowadays. Like the, the number one pick is going to have the most possible upside. Facts. The number one pick is never the guy who's done the most. Facts. The 2019 NBA draft has turned out to be be a little bit odd to me, a little bit underwhelming, but ultimately a big NBA lesson. Potential in the NBA and really in sports in general, it's always going to be just that, potential. I've been doing these draft three year later videos for the last two years. And Damn. what seems to be the common theme of all these drafts is that talent and potential it can materialize into great productivity when talent meets the hard work yeah but how hard hard work meets talent when talent fails to work hard bro it's a great Come productivity on. when talent meets the hard work but when that talent relies just on that and it stays stagnant and never evolves it's a <laughs> he showed Ben Simmons. Face. That's funny. I'm going to start this video by talking about two players that had two of the biggest potential base selections in this draft. Let's start with Zion Williams. Okay. Now, don't get it confused. Zion's talent wasn't just potential. We've seen the results yeah. immediately. Yeah, he was cooking. This man went from dominating high schoolers to, to completely grown men. bullying the entire NCAA. Yeah. His first game, this man had 28 points on 13 shots. His first three games, this man was Kobe's height, putting up Shaq-like numbers. Yeah. He was always a man among You just boys. can't say healthy, Zion's bro. main concerns was health. always his weight and his outside shooting. The yeah. raw talent and God-given abilities, that was always there. No, yeah. he wasn't fat at Duke. I always thought he was just strong with some baby fat on him. But like I said, I didn't think he was fat at about Duke. Him a few weeks ago, if you're borderline overweight, one injury is going to make you significantly overweight. That's, that's just how it goes. And that's exactly what happened to Zion. His Facts. career so far has been glimpses of what could be extremely dangerous, but ultimately a massive disappointment for the Pelicans franchise. Yeah. Remember, he started his career off injured, recovering from a torn meniscus. Mm -hmm. Then last year, he played what looks to be a miraculous 61 games. And now he's on the verge of missing his entire third season. Teams they draft these players to get their teams into better situations, not for the players that have great individual success with the logos on them. Like the Pelicans, they haven't gotten any better. Since yeah, that nigga the rim and with most that Most of it is is because of this. I know a lot of people don't like seeing this because of his talent, but if he misses this Damn. entire season, which he probably will, he is literally on a Greg Oden trajectory. Think about it like this: yeah. Zion was the number one pick. Right? They're gonna call him a bus, He's bro. He's 36th in games played in his entire draft. And everybody under him is pretty much not even in this league anymore. Damn. Also, for the longevity of his career, I don't like him having these early lower extremity injuries, especially. Yeah. When yeah, these lower injuries are definitely bad. Especially since his weight is like so high. Like they be saying like he's like he weighed like like 350. And shit, it's like, bro, damn. Casually heavy, and he's an explosive player that leaps out the gym. Yeah, I bro. hope for the sake of the future, he can lose some necessary weight and build on what looked to be a great start. He bro, he have there. to lose he's weight, just bro. never there. The flip side of potential is a guy that's now my second favorite player behind D'Lo, Darius Garland. Darius, yeah, Darius Garland is very risky bro, draft coach that pretty much got drafted off his potential. In mm -hmm. fact, I believe if he got drafted in the 2018 draft. He probably would have been a mid to low first round draft choice. Why was uh, he such a risk? Well, he only played four full games at the University of Vanderbilt before blowing out his knee. He damn. just happened to land in a relatively weak draft, and that's why he got drafted fifth. In those four games, he was incredible, but scouts, they definitely had their doubts. Ball uh -huh. handling was top tier. Getting to his spots and his craftiness looked pretty much effortless. 
But with the Cavs already not having a true point with the selection they had the year prior, Colin Sexton, some people question how assists. exactly another small guard like Darius, how exactly does he fix that? After the Cavs lost LeBron, they needed somebody to run an efficient offense. And believe it or not, playmaking, it, it didn't seem to be Darius's forte at Vanderbilt. Again, the sample size was so damn small. He only played four full games. So mm -hmm. scouts, they kind of had to nitpick. They pointed out the fact that he actually had two more turnovers than assists, and they didn't really know about his playmaking ability. Damn. Man, they, they just had no idea, bro. They, they just didn't know. This man is undoubtedly the best playmaker in that draft, one of the best playmakers in the league. And with the team he has now surrounding him, it complements his skill set beautifully. Obviously, I'm not happy that Colin Sexton got injured, like, at all. But the one bright spot about that is it allowed us to truly see how special Darius is as the primary ball handler for the Cavs. Frax. Last year, Colin led the team in usage rate for the majority of the year. So Darius, he really had to work around that. In fact, look at the playmaking difference since the beginning of last year with Colin Sexton and without Damn. Colin Sexton. He's clearly the best distributor with the offense. Yeah, he for sure. through his vision. For so sure. far, for the totality of these three years, Darius has been the second best player in this draft. And you can argue a wall. He's literally leading his team to the playoffs in one of the tightest, most competitive conferences ever. Like, that's, that's yeah. what it is. RJ Barrett, he was always the player in this draft that I struggled to read, project, and predict how good he was going to be in the NBA. And mainly, it, it was all because of who he played with at Duke. Like, he always seemed to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And last year, I thought his ceiling was a great role player. Nevertheless, this is exactly why you have to let these young 19, 20 year olds grow. You have to let them grow. Yeah, Recently, gotta let them grow. Let them play. Like he's finally turning that corner, and his confidence, it looks like a sky high. In the past, RJ, he struggled to create off the dribble. And with Derrick Rose and Julius Randle being the primary ball handlers for the majority of all last year, you were really putting him in that role player situation. And he wasn't bad in that role. But now, if you look at him as of late with Julius struggling a bit at times, no D Rose and Kimball Walker getting taken completely out the rotation, mm -hmm. he now has way more opportunities. And recently, he's been on the best stretch of his entire career. Yep. I still don't want to completely judge RJ until possibly Julius Randle was gone because that fit has always been a little bit odd to me. But as of right now, I think his ceiling is possibly a few all-star appearances. And who knows, maybe even more. Literally, as I'm recording this video right now, I just got the notification that Cam Reddish will undergo season-ending surgery. Yeah. Crazy. I'm a bunch Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter together because obviously they ended up on the same team. Mm -hmm. And so far, they've both been extremely disappointing for the exact same reason. They just can't stay on the court enough. I've seen someone say something that was so damn accurate when Cam was still in Atlanta. DeAndre Hunter and Cam, they've both been so injured while in Atlanta that combined, it's like they were just one first round pick. Instead of having two, you really God only damn. got one, if even that. I said this in my d -Lo video. It is impossible to develop if you are always returning from an injury. Like, yeah. Confidence is built through reps. Cam Reddish yeah. came into... Because when you're injured, um, players got to work to the level that they was back from injury. 20 years old. And then it's like, bro, it's really hard to grow when you keep getting in injured, bro. Two years. Like, that's just not going to cut it against grown men. DeAndre, he showed significant... They're not getting enough time on the court, the bro, to develop. Year. And then he got hurt, and it completely threw off his rhythm. Damn. Same thing this year. Cam, he gets traded to New York. He's slowly trying to incorporate himself in Dave's offense, and then he gets injured again. Both of these players, they just they just weren't there enough, bro, and it's hard to really judge them because they're not there. Tyler Hero, his career so far is the definition of not judging a 20-year-old by a 30-year-old's standard. Like, I don't understand why we do this. Yeah. Last year... This man got slammed, and I mean he crucified did. after his play in the first round against Milwaukee. People, they contributed all his early success to the bubble environment, hence the name Bubble Boy and yeah, all that. Yeah, people were shitting on Tyler. Year, and I know a lot of people don't like him for whatever reason, Jack Harlow, I don't know what it is, but people do not like this man. This year, he's easily the sixth man of the year, embracing that role. He's shown improvement literally every single season that he's been in the league, 
And honestly, I think this year, outside of probably Cal Lowry, he's been the most consistent Miami Heat all year. Mm. Cal, he's been like the glue guy for the team. That that glue guy, don't get me wrong. But Tyler scoring in key moments on and off the dribble, that's really been a difference maker. Notice the last two six men of the years, they've been the top season in conference if Ooh. Miami can hold on. So I'm still very proud of Miami for not selling his stock when Twitter told him to. Like he he's clearly talented, bro. Yeah. John ja Moran, he like bro, he, he's the best player in this draft so far. And to me, yeah, by it far. hasn't even really been close. Bro, he I'm not even talking about crazy. just numbers. And if you want to talk about numbers, we can go there too. I'm talking about team purposes. He yeah. and Darius Garland so far, they're the, the only centerpiece of that team that kind of lifted the team from the gutter into mm -hmm. relevancy. Facts. What's been so impressive about Ja? And I know right now he's the media darling, so it can be a little annoying, even for me. Mm -hmm. But you Facts. have to give this man his flowers. His teams have literally gotten better every single year since he's been there. Look yeah. at his winning percentages from the time that he first got there, before he got there. And right now, mind you, this has all been in the midst of key injuries to a young team, which can be extremely detrimental. Yeah, to Dylan Brooks coach. still Jaren hurt, Jackson bro. Jackson gone all last year. Dylan Brooks, arguably their best two-way player, gone all this year. And regardless, the team is still taking massive leaps. Jaws rookie year, playing game versus a steaming hot Portland team with Dane playing out of his mind, and they barely lose, and John Moran scored 35 points in that one. Mm -hmm. Last year, Pretty much the exact same scenario. Playing a Stephen Curry in the play-in game with Steph playing out of his mind, and he outduels Steph. Yeah, then that was a close game, too, against doing that Against the number one seed in the conference, the defensive player of the year, and one of the best defensive teams in the league, he averages 30 in his first playoff series. Mm. And now this year, this man's team is second in the West as I currently record this video. And look at the leap oh. that he's taken this year. Like, hands down, he's the best in this draft so far. Surprises yeah, that will be in this draft on the positive side. Cam Johnson, I didn't see him contributing to such a struggling Phoenix team. You got to remember how bad Phoenix was when they got Cam Johnson. But now with the playmaking of CP3, the coaching of Monty Williams, and really the emergence of Phoenix as a whole, he's found a very nice role with Phoenix. Like, I'm happy for Cam Johnson. Kobe White, he hasn't really materialized into anything special. But I will give him the Fred Hoiberg pass. Like, that environment seemed to be extremely tumultuous. Now, it seems like with less responsibilities and expectations, he has found a pretty solid role off the bench with Chicago. So, I'll give him that. Jordan Poole, he's like the bro. most Golden State draft pick ever. Bro. <laughs> Facts, bro. He's the most Golden State draft pick ever, bro. A low drive pick just fucking blossoms and fucking can be so productive, bro. It's like crazy. And he still seems to have a bit of that attitude problem, which concerned a lot mm. of people before the draft. And most importantly, he just struggles with consistency, bro. Remember when he had that 50-point burst out of nowhere last year and me and everybody else, we got all excited. But it's like since then, he hasn't really found that consistency. And that's really been his problem, especially with his shooting. And Bowl Bowl, the project of the draft. He, he's he been just that. Pretty much a big-ass project with God-given abilities. Yeah, he doesn't bro. really do anything that doesn't contribute to his individual numbers. Bro, I swear, he needs to go on, like, a trash team, bro. Like, bro, trash team where you get minutes. Because on the Nuggets, he can't really get minutes because Jokic is playing. So it's like... It's hard for him to find bro. the true fit on a real contender. And too often, on, on the true it's going to be rough, bro. Because he, he need to develop he first. that height advantage by trying to play on the perimeter too much. Oh, yeah, he that's true. That with him kind of having a low motor and he's a little injury prone, mm. I just can't see him in this league too much longer, bro. I just can't. Damn. If you guys like this video, make Damn, sure Bobo, damn. Quickly, comment your top five players in this draft in order i want to see where these mm. players where oh comment that in order um, make sure you guys your top five do draft in order in the comments stuff, guys. until next time as always but you know another great video from swish out you already know bro you already know what he be uh i think ja definitely the best out, out of the draft bro for sure but well when it comes to zion bro bro i don't know bro zion just need to like bro he's so injury prone and it's like bro he he gonna start losing weight and shit. But it's like, bro, Zion was just, like, so impactful when he was on the floor and shit, bro. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Like, bro, you would never expect Zion to be, like, this, like, fucked up at this point. But you know, bro. 
hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year or next year, you no, know, you know, he get right and actually get his body in shape and, and you know, you know, lower his risk of getting injured so much. But you know, uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you just anything else you want me to react, you know, down below in the comments and I'll check you out in the next one.